The Sixth Sense was directed and written by M. Night Shyamalan, starring Bruce Willis and Haley Joel Osment. It was a humongous phenomenon in 1999. I vividly remember in school people going around going, I see dead people. Hey, hey, Chris, I see dead people. And I was like, yeah, you're quoting the movie. <laughs> Good job. You're very original. Did you write that one? Oh, you're, you're quoting the movie. But seriously, in 1999, two humongous thrillers were these big hits, The Blair Witch Project and The Sixth Sense. They had a huge impact on popular culture. Everyone thought The Blair Witch Project could possibly be real. There was a kid in my school who was like, hey man, my friends and I snuck into The Blair Witch Project just to see how many times they said fuck. And I was like, how many times did they say it? Oh, like 130 times or something. It was crazy. And it was also the same year everyone was swinging their lightsabers around talking about Jar Jar Binks, as well as going, whoa, I'm the one. 1999 was a crazy year in cinema. Lots of crazy pop culture stuff happening all over the place. But everyone knew The Phantom Menace was going to be a hit. The Matrix was a big sci-fi action movie. The Sixth Sense came out of nowhere. It was directed by a no-name guy whose only two films were Wide Awake. He had written Stuart Little and a small film called Praying With Anger that was at a few film festivals once. For this unknown guy to make a movie with Bruce Willis that was such a phenomenon, have all these Oscar nominations and a script that was sold for like a million bucks or something, it's unheard of. Now we all know what eventually happened with M. Night Shyamalan's name. It's kind of been driven into the mud a bit with some of his more recent films. I've met the man personally. I actually had a chance to meet him at Comic-Con this year. I went to his panel for the movie The Visit. I got to ask him a question. I got to chat with him. And afterwards, I was able to shake his hand and talk to him a little bit. Nice guy, honestly. Really nice guy. He gets a lot of hate, but super nice guy in real life. The Sixth Sense, though, was what really catapulted him to fame. And we're going to be talking about that as the first film in my M. Night Shyamalan series leading up to The Visit, his film that comes out this September. I'm not going to review all of his movies. For one, I've reviewed some of his movies already, but I am going to talk about a few of his films, particularly his earlier ones, because those are really the ones I like to examine. And just as a warning, if you haven't seen this film, this review is going to be filled with spoilers, so go watch the movie first and then come back. This movie tells the tale of a child psychiatrist, played by Bruce Willis, who's trying to help a young boy, played by Haley Joel Osment, who has the affliction of seeing dead people walking around in his home at school while he walks around outside everywhere and he is tortured by this and Willis's character is trying to help him because he feels that in some way this will right a wrong of his past. This is a gorgeously directed movie with ingenious writing. I mean, almost every shot has something special about it or something unique. That's something that Shyamalan brought to the horror genre because when you watch the trailers for this movie, you actually go back and watch the trailer. It sells it as this straight up like teen teenage horror movie with Bruce Willis in it. But it's actually a movie with very mature exploration of faith and humanity and love and romance and marriage and the things that can really haunt a person. Not just ghosts, but things in your past. Being afraid that late in life you might realize there's that one thing you never got to do. This movie really dives deep into what makes us human. It's not just a scary ghost movie. Those aspects of the film are great. The scary stuff is all really cool, but it's a movie that went so much more under the surface than what you'd expect, and my god, I cannot do a review of The Sixth Sense without mentioning how great Haley Joel Osment was in this movie. It's one of the best child performances of all time. I watched this movie yesterday. You know, I always rewatch a film if I'm going to do a classic review, an older review. I always want to rewatch the movie to make sure it's fresh in my mind. I rewatched this movie and that kid is gold. He got an Oscar nomination for this movie and he is still really good despite endless parodies of The Sixth Sense. You can actually watch this movie and be like, this is a damn fucking good movie. It is just so well directed. And since this is a spoiler review, I'll just talk about this. Knight used the color red brilliantly in this movie as a way to depict something the dead have interacted with, something that's close by to the dead. The kid's sweater, the woman who's poisoning her daughter, she's wearing red next to the red roses, the red doorknob, red stairs, the red balloon. The color scheme of this movie is beautiful. They even went around into scenes and maybe if there was accidentally a little random red somewhere, they'd remove that red from the scene so that it would retain its significance whenever they wanted to use it. One of my favorite scenes in the movie is when Malcolm, played by Willis, is trying to get cold played by Osment, to come into the room and sit down so we can talk with him. He plays this mental game with him where if he gets something right about Cole, he has to take a step closer. The direction of this scene and the way it's written and Willis's really funny just little comedic senses where he's like holding his face and making little noises. It's so great. I've never seen Willis do a movie like this and this up until then in my opinion was the best performance
performance he'd ever pulled off. He was so great in The Sixth Sense, and it was something that I wasn't used to seeing because, yeah, he was good in Die Hard, he was good in Pulp Fiction, but this was a very subtle and quiet role, and he pulled it off like it was written for him. In fact, it was written for him. Shyamalan specifically wrote that role for Willis. He took it, and he was actually one of the guys who really championed Shyamalan back in the day when other people were like, no, you don't get to do this, you don't get to do that. Willis, according to Shyamalan anyway, was someone who was always on his side, supporting him, which is really cool, I think. Now, before we get the famous scene where Cole says, I see dead people, and all that's revealed, the movie has a great way of hinting at these strange little things. You don't always know what he's so afraid of. You don't quite know what's going on if you didn't see the trailers or don't know the plot. Once they finally reveal this and the camera is slowly panning in on Willis and he's trying to get Cole to explain it more, the camera work in this scene is perfect. It's perfect. I, I've rewatched the scene a couple times just in the past day because it is a perfectly directed moment. And as soon as that reveal happens, they just have fun with it. Cole's at home. Weird people are walking through his house. We get to see what he's seeing. And it was great. Like as a filmmaker or a writer, once you now have that out in the open, you can just have fun with it and play with it. And I can see Shyamalan really doing that after that reveal finally hits the fan. But he always maintains a great sense of what the film is actually about. Regret remorse, sorrow, pain, loss, things that are sad and deep and emotional, not just scary horror music with jump scares. This movie was a lot more than that. And I gotta talk about Toni Collette as Cole's mother. She gives such a real performance. When I watch her, I'm not thinking it's an actress. 100%, I know Toni Collette, I've seen her in a lot of movies, she's always really good, but when I watch her in this movie, she is that character. She perfectly embodied this character, this single mother who's struggling with the pain of not understanding what is torturing her child. And there's a little moment in this scene I never noticed until last night when I rewatched it. When Malcolm is watching his wife and she's embracing this guy in her store, he throws something at the window or he kicks the window, we don't know. When it pans back to him walking away, he appears to be holding the place where he got shot in the opening scene. Never noticed that ever. Ever. That's such a great little character moment. I love it. Now eventually Willis starts to think about what really is going on with Cole and he has this idea that these ghosts are just trying to communicate to Cole because they need help with something. Some kind of unfinished business. Something that needs to be solved. This leads us to this truly horrifying, when you really think about it, scene in which a father discovers that his wife was keeping their now dead daughter sick. And that is just, that's scarier than any jump scare. Just the thought of that, the thought of being around all these people at this funeral who are watching this happen, watching this knowledge come to fruition, this father seeing this, it's fucking terrifying. That's horror. That's what horror movies nowadays have forgotten about. Actual horror. Something that could actually happen that's terrifying and sad and disturbing. That's horror. Now, as I mentioned, Toni Collette is trying to figure out what's wrong with her son throughout the entire film. Once these characters finally have their arc, when they're stuck in traffic and Cole admits to her that he can see dead people and they have this beautiful moment where he tells his mother about his grandmother, her mother, and the things that she wanted to say. Oh my God, it's just tears. It's so beautiful. It's such a great moment. The way all the characters in this movie reach their arcs at just the right little moments, it's such a smart script. So we get to the big twist. More than likely, you know what it is. Bruce Willis has been dead the entire time. He's actually a ghost. It's probably the most famous twist in movie history because it is a great twist. It's not just a shocking ending. It makes sense when you rewatch the entire film. It makes the second viewing better because you can actually go back and you're like, oh my God, every scene still works when he's dead. When Cole is saying directly to Malcolm's face, I see dead people. They don't know they're dead. They're walking around like regular people. It's just panning in on Bruce Willis's face. Like, here you go. This is it. And most audience members were just like, this is a really good movie. Yeah. This, he's dead? You see certain scenes and in your head, you had assumed, well, he was talking to Tony Collette. That's why it cut to a wide of them in the same room together. But no, he really wasn't. He was just sitting there. She was waiting for her son to come home. You see the scene where he's sitting next to his wife at the anniversary dinner and you realize when he sat in the chair, the chair didn't even move. He didn't interact with anything in that scene. Nothing would have been floating or moving and everyone's like freaking out because the chair is like just pushed itself back. He interacted with nothing in that scene but our eyes told us that something was happening because we're so used to seeing movies played in a certain way. So not only is it a very clever twist ending, but it changes the entire film for 
the better makes you realize that they were playing with the way films are edited and our eyes told us that certain things were happening that weren't. I'm talking genius level writing and directing here, Shyamalan. The Sixth Sense most definitely gets an A+. So leading up to the visit, I want to talk some more about some Shyamalan films over this next month, and my next review is going to be for a Shyamalan film I've never reviewed, and that is Unbreakable. I'm very excited to talk to you guys about that film. Look forward to that very soon, and as always, thank you so much for watching, guys, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.